Amen, amen. Thank you so much, uh, Auntie Allen, uh, and mistress, as we call you. Um, and uh, thank you for that uh, very able um, introduction. I will not uh, even waste any more time to introduce myself because I think Auntie Allen has uh, done a good job. Good to be here. Very uh, rainy morning. Okay. Uh, it's raining heavily here as well. So we bless the Lord for uh, such good weather in the morning. Uh, it's very tempting, I'm sure, for many people to get out of your beds and uh, I'm sure some are listening while they're in their beds. But it's my prayer that the Lord will speak to us uh, this morning about the topic of repentance, the source of spiritual release. And I believe that uh, in one way or another, God will uh, minister to each one of us in our own uh, simple ways uh, as we listen to the word. Father, I thank you for this time. I commit myself before you. I ask that, Lord, you speak through me to your people. I pray that you will cause me to reduce as you increase in me and that whatever I speak will be indeed directly from the throne room of heaven and that you, O oh God, will be speaking to us and that you will continue to cause us to turn to you, to walk in repentance and to hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great. Um, I believe that we probably all know that this is a month, a uh, month of August that we have begun. Uh, let me also say this, that tomorrow is a very special day in my life, even uh, as I uh, cross into a new season. It's my birthday tomorrow. I'll be crossing into the fifth flow. Amen. So it's a special day tomorrow for me. So as we begin this month, there are a lot of things that are going to happen. But we are speaking about spiritual release. This is a month, or the theme of this month is spiritual release. And uh, if you've been um, following, yesterday we had Reverend Florence talking to us about released to forgive. At uh, lunch hour, we had signs of a caged soul. And in the evening, we had released to occupy and overcome. And so this, this month is going to be really talking about spiritual release. And I believe that uh, many of us will be released spiritually, but also in other aspects of our lives. And so today, the topic is taken from Acts chapter 3, verse 19, which says that, I'll read from verse 17, uh, just for us to get a little bit of context. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Then verse 19, which is our verse uh, of focus today, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Other verses talk about being blotted out. The times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Hallelujah. And verse 20, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Verse 21, heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. For Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from their people. Amen. And, and, and even as I was preparing, I, I, I had been reading through and I found that in this chapter, as Moses was uh, speaking to this crowd of people, addressing them and was saying this to them, just the uh, passage above that, he had just performed a miracle of healing the lame beggar. He had performed a miracle to them. But after performing the miracle, he's saying to them, repent, repent, then and turn to God. And one would wonder, why is he doing this? 
in the previous chapter, interestingly, chapter 2, verse 38 also, he is addressing another crowd there, all right? He is addressing another crowd there, and he's repeating, or he had uh, said the same thing before. He says in verse 38, chapter 2, Peter replied, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you take time to compare these two verses, you'll find that there are four things that are being addressed clearly in those two verses, in those two chapters, uh, chapter 2, verse 30, 38, and chapter 3, verse 19. The first thing there that is being um, spoken about is repent. Peter is talking about repenting. The next thing he talks about is either turn to God in verse, 30, uh, verse 9 and 19, and then be baptized in verse 38. Then the next thing he talks about is forgiveness of our sins. Forgiveness of our sins. And the verse 19 talks about your sins will be wiped out, which is really forgiveness. And then the last one talks about uh, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in verse 38 and talks about times of refreshing may come from the Lord in verse 19. Now, Interestingly, um, and I know uh, uh, Sister Allen um, remembers this, in, 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 in all saints, we had a, a lunch hour at some point that was called times of refreshing, times of refreshing. And I believe that time the leaders had, you know, um, had from the Lord and it was a season where people needed refreshing. And so... When I, I, I saw this, it kind of took me back to those times when we, we had that lunch hour uh, called Times of Refreshing. As uh, um, Mistress had mentioned, you know, uh, we, we have been in all sense for some time and we have been groomed there. So this, this kind of reminded me, Times of Refreshing. And, the, and, and when you compare it to the previous verses, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, meaning these two things are probably one and the same thing. But what am I saying? I'm trying to say to us that the focus of our topic today is repentance. Repentance is what is going to cause us to have a, a release in our spiritual lives. We need to be able to come to a point of repentance, a point of turning to God. And these two um, verses are very clear. They bring it out very clearly. True, re true repentance is always accompanied by a deep longing, a desire, or a sincere determination to forsake that course which you're taking that is displeasing, displeasing God. As, as you walk in life, as you walk um, and, and, and do life, there are things that we do that do not please God. One of the guys that I really love in the Bible is David. David was a guy that would always, always take time to, to, to um, remind himself, take time to come back to God. Even when he, he knows he has sinned, he would come back to God and say, God, forgive me for I've sinned, forgive me. He would repent sincerely. And so even for us this morning, one of the things that we need to know that as we talk about repentance, it is that thing that you need to do. Deep longing, deep desire, a sincere determination to forsake, to turn away, as the verse 19 uh, talked about, turn to God, turn to God. And so I want to uh, focus my um, message today about those four uh, things that I've talked about. Repentance, turning to God, uh, forgiveness from the Lord, and receiving the Holy Spirit, or times of refreshing in our lives, which is actually the very core uh, message for us. So repent and turn to God. And throughout this uh, Peter's sermon, uh, when you read it from verse 11 to the end, Peter is insisting and is speaking to the, the Jews and is saying, that Jesus is the savior. 
he suffered according to God's plan and, and the prophets had foretold his suffering. The apostles had seen Jesus, you know, Jesus' death and resurrection. And I believe, I honestly believe that even in that congregation that he was addressing, there were many people that had um, had Jesus preaching or teaching, healing, and they had, they had even seen or witnessed his death uh, and resurrection. So given these facts, Peter preached a message that only, he expected probably only one reaction from this audience. The appropriate reaction would be repent, as he said, and turn to God, even as he spoke this message to this uh, crowd of people, so that their sins would be wiped out. And so the meaning here of repent in Peter's sermon must be seen in context, that the audience was not an audience that didn't know Jesus. It knew Jesus and had seen, had witnessed miracles. Actually, like I said, if you read the, the, the verses before verse 19, above from verse 1, Peter had just performed a miracle. So they probably had an understanding of, of who God was and the power of God. But he's saying to them, repent. And what does this mean to us, even as believers? I know there may be some uh, people that are not born again on, on, on call this morning. And I believe that the Lord wants you to know him and to receive him. But even for those who are believers and have accepted the Christ, he is saying, repent and turn to God. He was speaking to a devout group of, of Jews who prayed at the temple, who kept the law. And so one would probably think, mm, do they need to hear that message? So for them, repentance was not so much turning away from sin-filled uh, life or a life that is full of sin or anything, not really. So in general, these Jews would have already been following the principles of good life based on the law, but he is insisting, repent. So what repent would or wouldn't have meant to the Jews was that their need to turn away from idols to serve God. And we see that in uh, first, first, first Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9, we see that um, pagan Gentiles convert, converts, the converts would have to take this step of repenting and turning to God. Verse 9 says that, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So there's that need to turn away from their idols, from the idols they worshipped, you know. Not so for the Jews. The Jews were really devout, you know. So the Jews detested idolatry. They only worshipped the one true God. And so this message, one would have thought, mm, no, not repentance. But Peter is here emphasizing, and I believe this morning, this is what is uh, being spoken to us as well. Peter spoke and he would say to them, repentance is necessary. Turning to God is necessary. The reason is because all have sinned and come or fall short of the glory of God, as it is said in Romans 3.23. So all have sinned. You and I have sinned, and we need to repent to turn to God. If we are to get that spiritual release, if we are to get that, um, the time of refreshing in our lives, to experience reconciliation with God, everyone needs forgiveness, everyone needs repentance, and everyone needs the Holy Spirit. If you're to experience reconciliation with God, if your um, relationship with God, with God is to work, you need forgiveness, you need to repent, or even let me put it the right way, you need to rep repent, you need to have forgiveness from the Lord and receive the Holy Spirit. Three very vital things, forgiveness, repentance, and receive the Holy Spirit. And so for Peter's audience in this um, chapter, repentance would mean turning to God by accepting Jesus as Lord and the Messiah whom God had chosen. Amen. So when people acknowledge the Savior, they acknowledge 
the one thing that the need for being saved from the condition of sinfulness. Whenever we acknowledge the Lord as Savior, whenever we accept the Lord as Savior, the one thing that you're doing or we are doing is acknowledging the need for being saved from that condition of sinfulness because we all fall short of the glory of God. Jesus has already paid for our sins. And in this context, Jesus had already paid for their sins, but they would not experience his forgiveness unless they turn to God. And that's why Peter was emphasizing it. That's why it's being emphasized this morning that we need to turn to God and receive his forgiveness that we may receive that Holy Spirit may receive the times of refreshing. So number two is the times of refreshing, times of refreshing. Peter also associated the forgiveness of sins with times of refreshing to come. And this is a, um, it's, 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 it's a unique phrase in the New Testament. It's generally um, been thought to refer to Jesus' return at a time of general salvation. Um, if you read verse one, uh, I, I, sorry, verse seven, chapter one, it's actually referring to Jesus' return at a time of general salvation. Jesus must remain in heaven until that time. That is until the time comes for God to restore everything. And, and I read that in, um, in verse 21, as I was reading uh, chapter three, uh, I'll just read it again. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. So he is saying that Jesus must remain in heaven until the time, until the time to restore everything. Peter is then associated the times of restoration times of refreshing with the future rebirth of Israel, as it is described in the Old Testament. There is, uh, there is um, there's something that he's trying to put forward when he's saying that until the time comes for God to restore everything, until that time of restoration, the rebirth of Israel, we, you and I, we need to receive the times of refreshing in our lives. We need to be renewed and restored at that point, you know. But the restitution or the refreshing that Peter speaks about or spoke about at that time is something that occurs at Jesus' return. Until this time, when all the enemies of God are overthrown, Jesus must remain in heaven. What Peter probably meant was that those that were listening to him should repent so that the times of refreshing could come to them. They will experience this refreshing for themselves when they repent and receive or sense the forgiveness and acceptance of God. As for God, he will send Jesus a second time. No one knows that time, but God will send Jesus for the, that second time. No one knows when that time will be. This is a secret that God alone knows. And, you know, we, you, 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 I've had even uh, people asking, but when is that time? We keep talking about, and it's, this is you here from Born Again, but you talk about Jesus is coming. Yes, he's coming. When is he coming? Every time you're telling, and they tell you, ah, you know, he's not even coming, you know. You've been talking about that when I was young up to now, but that is something God alone knows. It is him alone who knows, and none of us will know. But the time is coming for his return. So when he decrees it is time, then Jesus will come and he will restore everything as it is mentioned in uh, verse 21. But what did Peter mean by times of refreshing, therefore? How are these times linked with repentance? Why, why this whole repentance being converted and having our sin blotted out? What is all that? You know, so the one thing that uh, comes out clearly from that is that there is there there will be or there is a hope for physical refreshing. And the Greek word uh, rendered in refreshing denotes any kind of ref uh, refreshment. 
um, a, a kind of rest or deliverance from evil or any kind of um, uh, hindrance. So when they talk about um, refreshing, the Greek word is an equivalent of any kind of refreshment, a rest, a deliverance from evil, and any kind of um, stress. Refreshment can be linked to cool, original water on a hot day. If you're going out on a hot day, if you've been walking uh, in a hot day and someone gives you a cool bottle uh, of water, that kind of feeling that you receive is the refreshment uh, they're talking about. But this, in this sense, it is the spirit refreshing us. We are being refreshed by the Holy Spirit. When Peter made this statement to his listeners in Jerusalem, the people could quickly relate to his words, you know, being times of refreshing. And I believe that someone this morning needs that refreshment, that refreshing in their spirit. There is a need for being refreshed in our spirit. A favorite um, idea among the uh, Jews in the Old Testament was that when they awaited, uh, the awaited Messiah came, there was going to be or there would be times of physical rest and refreshing. And for the Jews that's in the Old Testament, that's what it kind of impl implied, that there will be a time of physical rest and refreshing. They, ant they anticipated these times of the gospel as a period when they would have rest from their enemies, rest period from the evils of oppression and war and great you know, national prosperity and peace. So that's for them, that's what they are looking at. Some form of physical rest uh, was in anticipation for them. And I believe this applies to us as well this morning, that even as we talk about repentance, as our topic says, the source of spiritual release, we are living in that anticipation of being set free or being uh, brought in a place of rest from our enemies, rest from uh, the evil oppression and war, rest from, you know, all kinds of things that the enemy has brought our way, the times of refreshing. So this future fulfillment is well supported in one of the examples um, of the man that I love, uh, most, uh, the psalmist. And the psalmist in uh, verse, in chapter nine, 96, verse 10 to 13, shows us that in God's kingdom, righteous judgment will bring joy. Hallelujah. Righteous judgment will bring joy. That is Psalm 96, verse 10 to 13. And Isaiah describes uh, a, a refreshed earth becoming like the garden of Eden in Isaiah 51, verse 3. These are all um, um, things that will show us what it is to be refreshed. Righteous judgment will bring joy. That the earth becomes like a garden of Eden. It will be refreshed. Jeremiah portrays the time when Israel will have rest and be quiet, and no one shall make him afraid. Jeremiah 30, verse 10. Amen. And Joel, Joel envisions a fountain of life-giving water flowing from the house of God in Joel 3.18. All these are speaking about the times of refreshing, times of refreshing. But along with this wonderful future prophecy, there appears also to be a sense in which the refreshing comes now to those who repent. And that's the reason for why we're speaking about repentance this morning. Peter outlined the steps everyone must take to be blessed with refreshing. He said, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out or maybe your sins may be wiped out. Of course, we must also take to heart the words of Jesus Christ in verse uh, 22. The message of repentance and last, lasting change is just an important, as important today as when Peter spoke. The message of repentance that Peter spoke about then is just as important 
today for each one of us. Repent, therefore, that you may be baptized, that you may turn away, turn to God, and be forgiven. Amen. So although there is often hardship involved in God's way of life, we all know how, you know, people have, you know, kept on uh, saying this, oh, you know, it's difficult to live a righteous life. Indeed, it's difficult in your own strength. But with God, it's possible. There is, there is, there's also, you know, refreshing in the sense of having peace of mind. As John, John uh, 33 says, there is a, a refreshing that happens. Um, Charity, if you could mute yourself. Charity, if you could mute yourself, please. Uh, thank you. So, when we repent, our sins are forgiven. And the verse says, we are baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. This peace of mind is possible even under difficult situations, even when you're going through the hardest of times. And, I, and, and, and Aunt Ellen mentioned that, that, you know, we, are, we woke up in the morning with all kinds of things on our minds, things that have been pressing us. But this morning, you're being uh, reminded and uh, you're being, um, what's the word? You're being, um, you're being reminded, really, that even in difficult conditions, if you are able to repent and turn to God, then you, are, you receive this peace of mind, a peace of mind in the, midi, in the midst of your difficulties through the comfort of the, or the comforting of the scriptures that we have read, the comforting of the scriptures and the Holy Spirit, Romans 15, verse 5. Amen. And even as I try to wind up, an insightful example of repentance, as I mentioned, is found in King David's humble prayer in which he asked for total forgiveness for his grievous sins. Psalm 51, this is some that most people know and have read many, many times. Psalm 51, verse 1 to 2. Have mercy on me, O God. This is David crying out after realizing he had messed up, after realizing he had done what was not pleasing God's side. He says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquities and cleanse me from all sin. When he finally realized the terribleness or the terrible things, he had, the thing he had done, you know, his sin in committing adultery with um, Bathsheba, Uriah's wife, and having her husband murdered to protect himself, he prayed. And one would think, ah, you know, how can you do this consciously? And then you come and ask for forgiveness. But our God is a God of compassion and is able to forgive. He says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. David sought the only solution that would bring him the inner peace. Inner key is the, the key word that is inner peace. Many of us desire to have that inner peace, that inner release, the spiritual release that we need. Inner peace and refreshing of being restored to God's loving favor. David desired that. Many of us on this call desire that, to have that inner peace. You are struggling, you are in a place of and certainty, you're in a place of confusion, you're in a place where conditions seem to be pressing you from all sides, you, you don't have peace. You need a refreshing, you need a peace that surpasses all human understanding. And David is a good example here. He comes to God even after doing that and says, God, forgive me, have mercy. David said, blessed is, the, is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Psalm 32 verse 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sins are forgiven, whose sin is covered by who? By, by God. We need to repent that our sins may be blotted out, that our sins may be uh, uh, wiped out, that we may be the people that are blessed, as David says, that our sin may be covered according to Psalm 32, uh, Psalm 32 verse 1. And I believe this is what God is saying to many of us this morning. 
that you need that. Even in the midst of your sinful nature, come to God, repent, ask for his forgiveness. God will always or is always willing and able to erase or to blot out the record of our sins. If we repent of them, if we repent, keyword, uh, if you repent, if you repent, God is willing. Come to God, ask him for forgiveness, and he will forgive you. Blotting out our sins or wiping out our sins was another thing that uh, I wanted to talk about even as I close. God does not change. God does not change. God, our God never changes. He said, I, even I, I am who I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. Isaiah 43, verse 25. I am he who blots out your transgressions and my own um, for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. He also said that. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions, our sins from us. Psalm 103, verse 11 to 12. Hallelujah. Our God is a God that never changes, but he also promises us. So we all sin. That is a fact. But God has provided the only solution for us to be restored to a peaceful relationship with him. If you want spiritual release this morning, you need to come to a place of repentance, a place of saying, God, I come in repentance. I ask for forgiveness. He has provided the solution for us to be restored to a peaceful relationship with him. Once you have a peaceful relationship with him, then you receive the Holy Spirit. Then you receive times of refreshing. As 1 John 1, 8 to 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God calls himself the fountain of living water. Do you need that living water? God calls himself the fountain of living water. He is the source of spiritual waters in quotes. He's the source of spiritual refreshing, spiritual uh, restoration that can cleanse you and I from our sins, according to Jeremiah 2, verse 13. This is the washing of regeneration that comes from God's Holy Spirit in Titus chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. So when we repent, our sins are forgiven by God. We call and, and once God forgives our sins, then we can truly enjoy a, 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 a refreshing peace of mind in, 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 in our lives in contrast to the turmoil and confusion we endure before that conversion. This is a promise from God that indeed cements our relationship with him. As Paul explained to the Philippians in uh, Philippians 4.7, the peace of God, which surpasses all of, uh, human understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The peace of God shall guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Sin has brought on mankind most of the sorrows, suffering, and decay that the world sees today. Sin. Friends, sin has brought this suffering to many of us. But God is saying to us this morning, repent and turn to him. Repentance will do what? Repentance will help you to attain a proper relationship with God, number one. Repentance will uh, help you to seize and, 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 and to stand, to, 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 to move away from standing in the way of blessing designed for other people, because God wants to use you to be a blessing to others. But when sin is in your life, then you cease to be a blessing. And so you're, you're hindering God's blessing for others in you, in, through you and through um, the things God has given to you. But also three, it, it, it actually, it will promote the coming of the great final manifestation of the Redeemer. And he shall send Jesus. So what am I saying this morning? What shall we do? What are we going to do? 
what is important for us to remember is that times of refreshing will come to each individual whose sins have been blotted out by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Romans 4, 7 to 8. If you want times of refreshing, if you want spiritual release, as our topic says this morning, then it's important for you to note that you need to repent. You need to turn to God. You need to have your sins wiped out and blotted out that you may receive the Holy Spirit and that you may receive times of refreshing. Those who ask God for a change of heart and who live by Christ's teaching will be on the path of God's gift of conversion. You ask and you will walk on that path. Our spiritual release only will come when we repent, turn to God, our sins are wiped away, and times of refreshing can finally come. Father, we thank you for the times of refreshing. We thank you for the opportunity you've given us to come to you in repentance. We thank you that you call us to yourself, that we may come and receive the peace that surpasses all human understanding, that times of refreshing will be indeed a part of our lives, that will be refreshed, will be restored, that at the time of his second coming, your son, Jesus Christ, we will be renewed, that will be different, we will be changed, oh God. And so we commit this morning, this day into your hands, Lord, go before us, lead us and guide us in everything that we're going to do for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Michael, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I was using two gadgets, I was, amen, amen. I want to thank you, Michael, for teaching us. This has been a, a topic that is pertinent to everything in life. Because when you repent, then you're forgiven and you turn to God and everything comes. So I want us to respond in prayer to what Michael has given us, to what Michael has taught. And uh, there still, there, um, our topic was repentance, the source of spiritual release. And we were dealing with acts. Welcome everybody who got us on the way. And we want to respond to this message. First of all, pray for yourself behind and uh, as we respond. Our God and our Father, I thank you. I worship you. I honor you. Magnify your name. I bless you for your good and your mercies are new every morning. Thank you for this that you have taught us. Thank you for giving us um. Thank you for giving us the teaching from your servant. And now, God, we bring come to you. There are seasons that we've been depressed. There are seasons that are, we are not refreshed. But this morning, refresh your children. This morning, we choose to repent. Our uh, friends, as Michael taught, there might be something you need to repent. There might be something you want to bring before God. Father God, can we? Just repent, just bring repentance and uh, ask God for refreshing. Ask God for forgiveness. Turn your heart to God and let everything be anew in this man. Our God and our Father ask that, Lord, you forgive me for times of grumbling, for times of unkeeping time, for times when I've thought that is really God hearing me, my God and my Father. Forgive, we ask for forgiveness as a team, as a people. Lord, we are with grumbled over anything that does not bring glory to you. That, Lord, where we've been slow to respond to your call, where we've delayed your coming because we have said, when will you come? But this morning we have been told. Lord, I ask that, Lord, I ask that you help us, help us. To, sorry, let me switch off before. Lord, I ask that you help us. Help us to know your will. As your servant has told, as your servant has given us time, times of refreshing need repentance. Time of refreshing 
we want to receive them. All of us here want to receive them, Lord. When we are refreshed, Lord, I can imagine when you have you run on the sun scorched day and you come to a pot of water. Lord, I'm reminded of the man of David who broke the guard. Lord, may we break any barrier, break any barrier over your children, break any barrier that is bringing us challenges, break any barrier over your children that is not making them to be refreshed because they have not heeded to repentance. Lord, I pray that, Lord, even among us, the saved people, we compromise. There are things that we, we do not uh, take seriously. There are things that the world has made us to, to think it is normal, and yet that is sin. Oh, Lord, our God, help us, Lord, even like the rain drops, wash us clean. Wash us, oh, Lord. Wash us by the, the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, remember no more our sins. Remember no more. Our friends, Michael taught on this topic, and repentance is absolute. You need it. You have to be repentant at all times. Sometimes it's even to children. You see, in the morning, what? Sometimes we lie to children and think that it's a good thing. You need to repent. Sometimes it's at work. You're late. But sometimes, but in all this, as we bring re re repentance, can you imagine that when you when you repent, the Lord blots out, blots out your sin. That's major. It's a major thing. It's not that when a, a judge acquits you and then, okay, the lawyers are on the forum, they would, but me, I'm, I'm talking, uh, you've been in court, and then the judge tells you you're forgiven. But the people keep saying from the other side, anyway, the judge has forgiven, but oh, acquitted you, but we shall, we shall come back. We shall see what to do. You know, but God, when you repent, the Bible says it blots away, it blots out our transgression. Can you imagine that Psalm 51? We have read again and again. I was laughing behind the scenes because yesterday night I was at it. I said, now this is Michael here. Was he looking when I was praying in my house? I'm telling you that Psalm is a beautiful one because. We need it. We need it daily. We need it weekly. Just like David. Let me tell you, we kill with our with our with our tongues. We kill with our eyes. We kill with our thoughts. But let me tell you that here the Lord is about repentance. Whether you come a thousand and one times, you will forgive. Forgive. And he doesn't remember like me, Alan. I'll remember the other day. I asked Michael, you give me the biggest mango, and he gave me a small one. I'm not forgiving you. No, the Lord forgives and blood remembers no more. Then the other thing is that he restores. Let's ask that the Lord restores. Lord, restore your children. Lord, restore their joy. Restore marriages. Restore relationships between children and parents. Restore because they have repented. Lord, be, if be there somebody who since I will not forgive, and yet the person has repented. This morning, let them be repent. Let them be forgiven. And I ask, O oh Lord, that you go with us this morning. You give us a joyful beginning, Lord. All the children of yours love here. Give them a joy, a joyful man, my God and my Father. Even those who have logged out, Lord, I pray for Michael. I pray for Habwe, Ali, Soker, Lord Anita, Lord Annabelle, Annette Karungi, Lord Aston, Atekede. Lord Betty, refresh them. Blandina, Brenda, Brian, Bridget, Lord Celia Moise, Lord Charlo, Cherop, Christine, Christine Naiga, Lord Deborah, Deborah B. Lord, refresh them. Doreen, Theodorosi, Edna, Inidesa, Esther, Lord Esther Nekambi, Lord Eunice, Evelyn, uh, Florence, uh, Lord Georgia, Georgina, Gertrude, Godfrey, Grace, uh, Harriet, Hope, the, fine, the person behind iPhone, Isabella, Lord. Jennifer, J J Jimmy, Joan, Lord Joshua, Joyce, Joyce Nyeko, Lord, refresh them. Lord, refresh them because they have brought repentance. Kati, Kedres, Kichoncho, Lord um, Prisla, Lillian, Liz, Lord McLean, Lord, these children of yours, Miriam, Mary, Ma uh, Machulet, Mary, Machulet, Mary Kay, M Mike, Mugisha, and the Kisekas, all those. Lord, 
uh, person with him or the mutakad uh, in the iPhone. Lord, Peter and his family, or Lord, in the desire, Lord, they can be, Lord, the person before behind Nokia 20, Lord, refresh Nora, refresh Nora, and let's refresh Olivia, patience, Paul, Lord, Paul, in all these children of yours, Peter Kalango, proud. Lord, let there be a time of refreshing because there's been repentance. Lord, refresh Prisla, Rebecca, Resty. Lord, Father Hillary, Lord, Robina, Lord, Robson, uh, Rose, Lord, Auntie Rufina, Lord, uh, Auntie Sharon, Lord, Timothy, Lord, Trophy, oh, uh, Lord, my God, refresh us, Zipporah, and the Zoom user, all the people who have children and people in their offices who are listening, Lord, those even who left, oh, Lord, Lord, my God and my Father, May you refresh them, refresh our families, refresh us, because Lord, repentance brings refreshing and forgiveness. And Lord, turn your face to us this month. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name, I have prayed.